So, James, yep. aka Jamesy Boy, surely, mm. welcome to the tropical sunny paradise that is Perth. That's fantastic. That is Perth, it. Scotland, not Australia. <laughs> uh, though it feels like it, you could be in the outback today. Mm. Um, you're a bit more used to this heat. Yeah. But yeah, it's been a while since we last got up. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's always good to chat nonsense. Um, and just randomly, I have been I, wondering if I should change my name to Jamesy Man, Shirley. Jamesy you know, Man. Do you I think? was just asking what age you were at. I'm 33. 33, I know. Say, well, I can almost grow a beard as well. Like, it's almost. Yeah, yeah getting almost. there. A, f- a few whiskers sprouting out. Right <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, well, I was quite interested in maybe doing some having a chit chat about the being a privateer rider. Um, because you know all the riders that we and everybody out there follows there's a lot there about uh, pro riders um, not so much about privateers and the hard work that they do like yourself it's a big slog even down to your travel this van is incredible you built it up well not the actual van but the interior Aye. you did yourself didn't you yeah 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 yeah. and that took a lot of graft and it's impressive what you did thanks very much Um. Yeah. so yeah it takes a lot of work as a privateer so uh, one thing that I get is a lot of messages from people asking to sponsor them, mm-hmm, supply mm-hmm. them, things like that and a lot of young people don't get it, mm. they think literally you'll get, can I get free stuff Yeah. and that's as far as it'll go a lot of the time um, so maybe if you can say what does it take to be a privateer rider and make it work interesting question, I think um, yeah, well privateer or whatever type of sponsored pro rider ultimately you just have to want it i think and and but you have to be more proactive than just dreaming about it you have to yeah action speak louder than words you know so mm. um yes i am technically working all of the time i'm always training or riding or yeah as you say like the van mm. is i kind of part of what I do in a way um, you know because it allows me the freedom to travel and to compete and everything Yeah. Um, and you just have to decide what you want and and go for it you know yeah. no one's going to give you a sponsorship if you're not out there already doing it but yeah. a lot of people they struggle with the idea of commitment because it's a bit scary there's a lot of unknowns you know you're kind of obviously not going to get paid to start with Yeah. but if it's what you want to do Mm-hmm. regardless of the support and yeah. the support's a bonus then you know then it's it's kind of all worth it um yeah i think that's yeah. what's lacking nowadays uh it may i'm sounding really old saying this mm. but i think that's what's lacking nowadays is the commitment and work ethic mm. uh, we've seen a lot of stuff with social media now people just doing things randomly on camera uh some crazy stuff and they get free stuff for it and so a lot of youths are thinking that's what it takes but it does take a lot more. Like, let's like say even just your travel, just getting to where you want to go to partake in a race. Mm. Um, like you did recently the Meg Avalanche and Maxi yep. Avalanche as well. Yeah, yeah. I think and well. you did quite well there as well. Um, yeah, I did okay. I, I, they're such a lottery. I um, quite often come away from those races feeling a bit frustrated because there's... Yeah. You've had so a bit many... of bad luck with them. I feel like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not going super smoothly, but um, yeah. yeah, but I think that's why it's almost addictive is because you know, mm. uh, like when it goes well, it's such a good feeling. Kind of. Yeah, and that's what will draw you back again the following year. To, mm. It's like mm. unfinished business, isn't it? <laughs> uh, as long as you don't get yeah. another Kevin. And, and I will, dinner. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So say Meg Avalanche for example, how many runs will you do before your actual race? Run? Mm, yeah, good question. Um, you're kind of there, say get there on Monday or Tuesday and you're, mm. you're welcome to practice all week. Probably do, probably only do one or two practice runs of the main race. Really? Um, and I did, I think, maybe three or four practices of the quali. Yeah. Um, as it's, it is very important to get a good start in your quali and a good result in your quali to mm. be on, you want to be front row for the main event. Aye. It's all about getting a good start and then you need to get a good snow and then yeah. from from the snow it's quite often a single track procession on the, the, the race run Yeah. Um, and there's not really much line choice to be found. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, very few I've seen some opportunities. pretty smart line choices you took, some... Um, everybody's taking the same line and it was some footage of you like skirting some might say cutting the corner but I you're know. not breaking rules no exactly as long as it's as long as you're not you're going where the tape um, is. yeah yeah the course is defined by the tape yeah. so that's that's almost what makes uh, these mass start races generally quite fun andorra was a bit yeah. different it was very narrow and it made overtaking really difficult yeah uh, it was especially bad for me i punctured in qualies i was at the back of the grid so it was a yeah. nightmare um, but it's quite high alpine generally, and and you're kind of you're just racing down scree sometimes. There mm. is no track. The, yeah. the track is only forms during practice as people right. start to ride the same bit of hillside, which then yeah, yeah. develops into a trail. Yeah. So it's not even, you know, it's a bit of a free for all as long as you're mm. within the, within the markers, within the tape or the poles, so you can do what you want, and which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you just need to uh, yeah you're, you're always the first run down you're just looking to see where all the options could be and that kind of thing yeah yeah that's brilliant yeah. and you've got the other event coming up that you won last year mm -hmm. um, the new event what's it called again? Uh, Trans Varieta Trans Varieta yeah because yeah. that looked a very successful event yeah, uh, I was saying yeah. Earlier, they, they did amazing with their media coverage and mm. everything as well mm. uh, it was yeah. very uh, glitzy and everything it was very very good yeah so. and um rider experience i really enjoyed it as well mm, it was good, good like training. really fun friendly vibe and and it seemed very well organized uh, a couple of people got lost but i think that's fine yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it was cool yeah 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 um and then get back and then the plan is to go to Crans Montana and wow. hopefully race the e-bike race and the normal nice. EWS as like a double header and mm. then go to Finale as well after that for again hopefully the e-bike race but we will yeah, see. Yeah nice um, and e-bike racing from what I've seen of EWS you'd, you'd think it'd be so much easier but being e-bikes but certainly with them they threw in a lot of very steep uphills. Yeah. It's almost uh, trials riding on e-bikes um so it looks physical stuff but again you like physical riding yeah i kind of do yeah. and, I, and I, it'll be interesting to see where e-biking goes because it's still relatively new yeah. um but i'm quite excited to try it and um i'm not quite sure if and when my e-bike career will start yeah. um but uh i'm looking forward to it um and as well as just having a couple of uphill stages it's it's a big endurance event so i sort of mentioned earlier i feel like traditional ews is kind of just a short one day event but you yeah. look at the e-bike race and they go there's three massive loops they use three batteries they go like up that mountain yeah. over that mountain and down the next valley and yeah it's a huge day out like you really do need a lot of endurance to survive absolutely um, and i think that's quite cool um, yeah yeah, yeah. You think it's quite cool. I'm not <laughs> sure it's suited to me. <laughs> and as well, I think because cause it is such a big mission, Yeah. there is, I assume anyway, and I've spoken to some riders who have competed, there's a bit mm. less pressure on practice. Or certainly yeah. there's less pressure to have to learn every line, you know, because yeah. it's uh, it's really just about getting an idea of where you're going. There's so much, mm. you cover so much terrain that it, it seems like, it seems pointless to try and walk every stage, you know, it's yeah, yeah. it's more about just going back to basics and riding your There's bike. There's too much to remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's where I lack is memory. Um, <laughs> so, 
yeah, GoPro footage, all that, even that doesn't, you know, that doesn't mean for me at all, so. But still, with that kind of mileage, I think I'm more suited to petrol engines. Yeah, I will, yeah. Letting <laughs> <laughs> the bike do the work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we enjoyed um, a lot of riding today already. Uh, we'll show some of that and some photography that we did. We got a lot of help off Andrew Leinster there. It was a successful day. Thank you. Um, and you'll be possibly back this way again October time. Yeah. It'll be good to get another catch yeah. up and yeah, see how cool. things progressed and how racing went. Uh, we'll definitely keep in touch and Excellent. show a little bit more for folks. So yeah, thank you very cool. much. Thank you very That's much, sir. <laughs> now we'll figure out how to put Andrew's camera off. Cause yeah, there must be a button somewhere. Did he take the cake? <laughs> no, he's still got the cake. I would have thought there would be a red record button. <laughs> Is that not how these things work? Normally.